Hi there, I'm Paul Kirtley, founder of Frontier Bushcraft and author of Paul Kirtley's blog, the leading source of wilderness bushcraft information on the net. In this video, I'd like to share with you some simple tips and tricks on getting really big sparks from your Swedish fire steel. These Swedish fire steels, sometimes known as a fire flash, are excellent fire lighting gadgets. Uh, there's nothing to go wrong on them, there's no moving parts, they work when they're wet and they produce many, many sparks. A box of matches may contain 40 matches and a lighter only has so much lighter fuel in it, whereas one of these you can create about 10,000 sparks with one of these. So they can last and last and last and last. And it's important to know how to use them with the maximum efficiency. So for holding our fire flash, it does have this ergonomic thumb depression here, which is designed for you to put your thumb in here. And um, that, that works quite well, but this technique I'm gonna show you, what we're gonna do is we're gonna push it a little bit further back in our hand and hold the actual shaft, the actual rod here, and put this handle back in the palm of our hand here. And that's for a couple of reasons. One is that it gives it a bit more, we've got a bit more support, and also we can pull that back a little bit versus the thing that we're striking it with. Um, we can place our forefinger here to give support so that we can drop a spark directly over what we're trying to light, and that minimizes the gap between the end of the fire flash and the, uh, the material we're dropping the spark into without actually needing to touch the material. And we've also got a bit of space so that we don't crash into the material that we're lighting there. So that's a way of supporting it really solidly and getting it as close to the material we're trying to light as possible. So that's the first stage. The second stage is looking at how we strike it. And for this technique, we're gonna strike it with our knife. And the part of the knife you're gonna use is where the bevel comes up to the back of the knife here. And you're always gonna get a good, clean edge there, right angle, and it's gonna be sharp and well-defined because you're sharpening the bevel and that will create a good, clean edge here. And that's gonna get plenty of purchase into the fire steel. And so we can drop a nice, clean spark just where we want it, just here, for example, bring the two together. We're gonna to push with the thumb here, but we're also gonna support it with the thumb here and slide down in a very controlled fashion. Back of the knife, onto the front of the fire steel here and pushing off to create a nice big spark, like so, in a very defined area, like that. A useful trick you can use in addition to being able to drop a big spark in one spot is to shave off some material from your fire flash before you drop the spark. And the way that we do that is exactly the same action as creating a spark, but just a little less vigorously, a little more slowly and a little more gently. So you're not quite doing it fast enough or hard enough to create a spark, but you are getting enough purchase to scrape off a nice little pile metal shavings there. When we've got a little pile, what we then do is drop a spark in the middle of them, like so, and away they all go. And that can be really useful in getting enough oomph into your fire lighting, particularly in damp or cold conditions, or you've got some slightly difficult tinder. I'll show you again. So we're shaving off some metal, like so, and then a nice little spark. And there it goes. So there, you can produce some really nice big sparks using the back of the bevel, where the back meets the bevel of your knife, pushing down. And you might be thinking, well, Paul uses a knife with a, with a large bevel, and uh, that area where the back meets the bevel is pretty big, so it's easy to push off lots of metal from a fire flash. What about using other types of knives? And in particular, what about using the, the type of knife that's become pretty much the de facto standard bushcraft knife, the one that many people stick with, and certainly the one that many people use as a beginner. Um, I certainly started with this type of knife, the, uh, the Mora, um, 
now known as the companion knife, but also has been known as the clipper and the 840. And this has got a relatively narrow bevel compared to the knife that, that I use. And also this area here where the uh, bevel meets the back is relatively small. Can we use that technique with the fire flash in the same way as I use with my PK1? Well, the answer is yes. And let's take a look. So bring the two together here, scrape a bit of material off and there we go or just a straight spark. Get some really good consistent sparks from that. Being able to drop a really big spark at really close proximity means that we can light a whole range of natural materials and a whole range of man-made materials, whether we're using our mora or whether we're using a more custom bushcraft or survival knife. For example, we could light birch bark, or we could light a man-made equivalent. So there you have it, a really great way of producing big sparks from your Swedish fire steel. Yeah, it takes a little bit of practice, but once you've got it, you'll always be able to produce really nice big sparks. You can light your fire even in really wet conditions, get that concentrated spark just where you need it. So I hope that serves you well. I hope you find it useful. Um, if you'd like more tips and tricks like this one, please go over to my website, paulkirtley.co.uk. There you'll find 20 more free videos just like this one, plus loads of other free information. So head on over there now, paulkirtley.co.uk and get your 20 free videos. Thanks for watching this one. Hope you found it interesting and I'll see you on the next video.